Hello, everyone. So uh, I'm Roger Veer. Uh, I'm the CEO of Bitcoin.com. And for those that don't know, I was the first person in the entire world to start investing in Bitcoin-related startups. So uh, I've been involved now almost eight years full time. And I don't feel any older, but when I look at the pictures of myself from the early events, uh, I definitely did get a little bit older. But I want to talk about why this is so exciting, right? I've been involved full-time pretty much every waking moment of my life now for almost eight years promoting digital currencies. And why would I drop everything in my entire life to focus on this full-time? Well, luckily that's what the next slide is about. And that font might be a little bit small for all of us to read here, but uh, I listed out the reasons why I started investing in Bitcoin in 2011. And they're the exact same reasons I'm investing in Bitcoin Cash today. And uh, we have on the left here, we have the column of what makes Bitcoin Bitcoin. And we can see that the characteristics there are peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, low fee, fast payments, reliable payments, on-chain scaling, non-reversible payments, a chain of digital signatures with opcodes and scripting, and SHA-256 proof of work with one CPU meaning one vote and the longest chain with a proof of work. And some of those things can be a little bit nerdy, but some are very easy to understand, like fast, cheap, low fee transactions that are reliable. And in 2011, Bitcoin had all of those things. The BTC version of Bitcoin had all of those things. Sadly, today, the BTC version of Bitcoin only has two of those things. And the Bitcoin Cash version has all but one of those things. And in the bottom part of the graph here, I, I put the, the things that made Bitcoin popular to begin with. And those are the ones that are very easy to understand. Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Quite a few of you in the audience have already set up Bitcoin wallets for today. If you don't already have a Bitcoin Cash wallet, come and find me or anybody at our Bitcoin.com booth. And we will set you up with a Bitcoin Cash wallet so you can see the magic of Bitcoin that's been around since 2011 when I got involved and even earlier than that as well. And Bitcoin, of course, they need to be low fee, fast, reliable, and non-reversible. And we can see that in 2011, the BTC version of Bitcoin had all of those characteristics. Today, the BTC version of Bitcoin has none of those characteristics, but the Bitcoin Cash version of Bitcoin has all of those characteristics. And those are the reasons I started investing in Bitcoin in 2011 when they were less than a dollar each. And that's why I'm here on the stage today telling you that I'm investing in Bitcoin Cash today and working on promoting Bitcoin Cash because it has all of those characteristics that made Bitcoin popular in the first place. And when I was investing in Bitcoin in 2011, lots of people said, this is stupid. Why are you wasting your time on this? This is nonsense. And I hear many of those exact same arguments against Bitcoin Cash today. But all the naysayers in 2011 were wrong about Bitcoin. And all of the naysayers about Bitcoin Cash today are going to be wrong about Bitcoin Cash. Because at the end of the day, digital currencies need to be usable as a currency. And in order to be usable as a currency, they need to have fast, cheap, reliable transactions. And the BTC version of Bitcoin no longer has that. The Bitcoin Cash version clearly does. But that brings us to why is all this important, right? Why, would, why are we all here today? Why, why do I hope all of us are here today? Well, those characteristics mean that digital currency and Bitcoin Cash specifically may be the most effective way the world has ever seen to increase economic freedom. If this happens, the implications are profound. It could lift many countries out of poverty, improve the lives of billions of people, and accelerate the pace of innovation around the world. That's some pretty powerful stuff. And that's a quote from Brian Armstrong, the founder of Coinbase, one of the biggest cryptocurrency exchanges and wallets in the entire world, who also got involved in Bitcoin, I believe, in 2011. So let's talk about what economic freedom is and why it's important. Well. Economic freedom is a measure of how easy it is for members of society to participate in the economy. It has a bunch of factors such as how easy it is to start a business, whether property rights are enforced, free trade with people in other nations. We heard a lot about regulation in the last uh, presenter there. 
nine billion dollars a year, I think he said, was spent with uh, regulatory compliance at uh, J.P. Morgan or Goldman Sachs or one of those groups. Think about it. nine billion dollars buys a lot of stuff. We can uh, really help improve the efficiency there using this currency and uh, technology, and of course the stability of the currency. And here we have a really, really interesting chart of different countries around the world. And on the left, we have countries with the most economic freedom in the world. And on the right, we have countries with the least amount of economic freedom in the world. And on the left, we can see that we have countries like Hong Kong, Singapore, New Zealand, Switzerland, Australia, and a bunch of other really wonderful places to live on our planet. And on the right, we have a list of countries with the least amount of economic freedom in the world. And we have places like North Korea, Cuba, Venezuela, and Zimbabwe. Places that if you compare with the countries on the left side of this list, you would probably not want to live in any of the countries on the right side of the list there. And sometimes a picture can be worth a thousand words, or a thousand charts, or a thousand graphs. And here we can see the picture of the difference with Hong Kong in the 1950s that was just a sleepy little port versus Hong Kong today that's become a world-class economic powerhouse of a city. And on the bottom here we have a picture of Havana, Cuba in the 1950s versus Havana, Cuba today where they haven't had much economic freedom and not much changed at all in that same period of time. And so that brings us to why economic freedom is so important. And we've listed it out here, it's so clear. It's because it leads to higher per capita income. Who wants to earn more money? Well, people in countries with more, I see some hands up in the back there for sure. Countries with more economic freedom have a higher per capita income. Countries with more economic freedom have a liar, longer life expectancy rate. Who wants to live longer, right? Everybody wants to live longer and if you disagree, there's, there's options where you can bring your life to an end today, and I hope none of you do, but everybody wants to live longer. It leads to higher literacy rates. It leads to better income for the poorest 10% of society. Who wants to see the poorest 10% of society be better off? Right? I know I sure do. And ask yourself, is a poor person in a rich country better off than a poor person in a poor country? Is a poor person in Switzerland better off than a poor person in Zimbabwe? Well, of course they are. And so poor people in countries with more economic freedom are far better off than poor people in countries with less economic freedom. Who likes clean air and clean water and a clean environment? Well, countries with more economic freedom have more economic resources to devote towards those sorts of things. So you have better environmental protection in countries with more economic freedom than in ones with less economic freedom. And you have fewer wars and violent conflicts in countries with more economic freedom than in ones with less. And if you look around the world, the most destructive thing for humanity are wars. They literally take economic resources that could have been used to build houses or clothes or food for people to eat, and instead they divert those economic resources that would have been used to make the world a better place for everybody and they use it to build things like guns and bombs and tanks to murder people around the world. Well, countries with more economic freedom engage in less of that sort of thing. So if you want to see less guns and bombs and tanks being used to murder people around the world, you should be supporting more economic freedom around the world. Thank you. And it's really hard to be happy if you're having, you know, guns or bombs or tanks roaming around your neighborhood. And so in countries with more economic freedom, you have a higher self-reported happiness of the citizens living in those countries. So if you want people to be happy, economic freedom is the way to go. And this is another one that I think is really important. We have less corruption and bribery in countries with more economic freedom. And we can stop and think for a moment, why would that be the case? Well, in an economically free country, if you want to start a business, you basically just do it. If you want to buy or sell a product with your neighbor, you basically just do it. And you don't have to ask for permission. Free people just engage in free trade with others, and that's the end of it. But in countries with less economic freedom, you have to ask for permission for every last little step of everything. 
And oftentimes, the easiest way to get that permission is to bribe a bureaucrat. And that's why you see much more corruption and bribery in countries with less economic freedom than in countries with more economic freedom. And here we have some fantastic charts that you can see in a picture form. Countries with more economic freedom have a much, much higher standard of, uh, of level of income for the poorest 10% of society. And in dark green is the, the countries with the most economic freedom, and in red are countries with the less, least economic freedom. The correlation is incredibly clear. And here we have the same correlation with the income per capita. The more economic freedom a country has, the higher the income per capita in that country, and a very, very clear correlation. And adult literacy as well. Countries with more economic freedom have more people who know how to read, and countries with less economic freedom have fewer people that know how to read. And life expectancy. Countries with more economic freedom have people who live longer than countries with less economic freedom. Here's a chart, plain as day. Unemployment. Countries with more economic freedom have less unemployment. Countries with more regulation as to what it's required to start a business or to hire somebody or to do this or do that. Well, guess what? The more hurdles you put in the way of the economy, the fewer economic activity you're going to have and the more economic uh, unemployment you're going to have as a result of that. So here we can see very clearly countries with more economic freedom have less uh, unemployment and countries with more... Uh, with more economic control of the economy, have more unemployment. Infant mortality, right? Everybody loves babies. Well, in countries with more economic freedom, fewer children die at childbirth. So if you want to see more children surviving childbirth and growing into adulthood and making the world a better place, countries with more economic freedom enable that to happen as well. And in countries with less economic freedom, you literally have more babies dying at childbirth. That's really, really important. And children in the labor force. A lot of people get confused and think that in you know, first world countries we don't have kids in the labor force because politicians passed laws forbidding the kids from entering the labor force. But the real reason is that through economic freedom, we were able to raise the standard of living of everybody and children no longer had to be forced into the labor force when they were forced between having to choose between working and being able to eat. So in countries like the UK and Switzerland and Hong Kong and these other economically free places, you don't have kids working in the labor force because the, the society has become wealthy enough where they no longer have to. Whereas in countries with less economic freedom, you have less economic prosperity and children are still forced into the labor force because of that economic circumstance. And it's worth pointing out that correlation doesn't prove causation, but we've seen example after example after example in both theory and in practice, and I think we can make some really, really strong inferences there. And that brings me to why I'm so excited about Bitcoin Cash and digital currencies in general, because its impact on economic freedom is that it makes it easier for anyone to start a business anywhere. It enforces property rights. It promotes free trade. It enables freedom of contract. And a really fun one, it enables people to opt out of corrupt systems. And we're seeing an example of a pretty darn corrupt system in Venezuela right now. What if we manage to do a good enough job getting the word out to all these people in Venezuela that they don't have to participate in that stupid corrupt system where the politicians are printing as much money as they want every day to pay for all sorts of things and impoverishing the people as a result? Well, let's help spread that word because there's only so much each of us can do individually, but all of us together can really make a big impact on the entire world by spreading the news that digital currencies are here and they're available to everyone to help bring more economic freedom to the entire world. And I'll end uh, here with a quote from Brian Armstrong. He says, if we can create more economic freedom in the world, it will serve as a giant economic stimulus package for the world, accelerate innovation, reduce wars, make the 10% better off, the poorest 10% better off, and everybody else too, overthrow corrupt governments. That's an exciting one. And raise happiness. And I say, Bitcoin Cash and digital currencies are the best tools the world has ever had to accomplish these goals. So thank you all very much. If you like it, tell your friends to get started today with Bitcoin. 
Bitcoin.com is the website. Tell a friend, come visit us at the booth, and we'll set you up with your first Bitcoin Cash wallet if you don't have one already. That's my time. Thank you very much. Roger Ver.